guys, I love this episode so much. And I can't wait for you to listen. When you get to the end, (laughs) you're going to be able to tell by the end. We're like, oh my gosh, let's be best friends. Dr. Elizabeth Rogers is freaking awesome. Okay. So here's her background. You can kind of tell from her life trajectory that she has always just wanted to help people feel better. So she started out in her education, getting a bachelor's in psychology, and then she went on to get a master's in public health and then her doctorate in epidemiology, which she'll explain a little better in the episode, but in a nutshell, epidemiology is finding out what is the root cause, which I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you for the love of God, a doctor that wants to know the root cause. Sorry, no offense to the doctors out there, but there are a lot, a lot, a lot in the Western medicine um, world that are not looking at root cause. They're just slapping medicines on stuff. And she's the polar opposite of that. She, um, after, you know, her career in traditional Western medicine as a doctor, she has now started her own holistic healing practice where she combines her Western medicine education as a doctor with more natural energetic and and spiritual components to get true healing. You got to have them. And you know, what's so cool about Dr. Rogers is you, you'll be able to tell as you listen to this episode, she freaking cares. She cares. She listens to people. She actually wants to know what's going on with them so she can help them feel better. I resonate with her so much. I can, you can tell just like her, her soul, her essence is I just want to help people feel better. And so she's sharing a lot of those ways that she does that in this episode. And she also shares her own crazy experience, um, having to go through that herself, like from the bottom up. So cool. She is like a living, breathing example of what she's teaching. Um, I hope you guys kind of, I kind of hope you watch on YouTube on this one. Cause like just her energy is so beautiful. Um, but audio is awesome as well. Um, make sure, you know, you can watch all these episodes on my YouTube channel, which is, um, youtube.com forward slash coach Tara Garrison. And then of course on, you know, on all the audio outlets, but you can find, uh, Dr. Rogers, we'll put it at the end of the episode and then all the show notes, but you can find her on her website, healthy transformations with heart. Um, and she's also on Instagram. It's at healthy transformations underscore heart. All right. Let's jump into some real healing with Dr. Elizabeth Rogers. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more or REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test, there's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So, um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So, um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios. Right. So, um, yeah, take advantage of it guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount on to you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Hey guys, before we get into the episode, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about higher coaching. This is my coaching system. And I get a lot of questions because, um, it's not just training and nutrition. We do that. I love training and nutrition, obviously, but we also do more. We do personal development and the way that's delivered is a 90 day personal development program that you go through with me when you work with me. So it's a video course with questions for you to deep dive in yourself for the first 90 days of working with me. Now that comes as part of a morning routine. I am really big on the morning routine and you ask any of my clients, I will push you on that because it's life changing. So we start with meditation and then we do gratitude and then that personal development program. Um, that's our deep dive 
psychologically and after the 90 days you go to the next level you start doing what I'm doing currently and it's a lot of strategic goal setting and it's really really honestly miraculous what's happening not only in my life but in my clients lives like it brings me to tears when I get on calls with them I'm like do you see yourself like do you see what you're doing that is so cool so anyway that is um, for me the bread and butter of my coaching I love it so much um also though in, in regards to your body, I also like to go deep dive and see what might be holding you back. So that's where all the biohacking side comes in. We do a physiological deep dive as well. So we do blood testing, hair mineral testing, DNA testing, body composition, aura ring. Um, so your heart rate variability, your sleep cycles. Do you have any deficiencies? Do you have issues with sleep you didn't even know about? Let's find out, you know? Um, so that's that's how I approach things in higher. There's more. We do prizes every month. Nikes, Lulus, um, all my favorite products and foods to keep you motivated, to keep those habits up. We do three Zoom calls a week so you get support. We have a private Facebook group. We're all vibing and, and cheering each other along the way. We get raw and real and honest. And it's just, yeah, it's like... I created my life and I created my life the way I like and I like to deep dive with a bunch of bad A people that really want to optimize their lives and it's an honor for me to serve them in that. Um, so I just thought I would tell you about it because I don't know if I talk about it quite enough. So if you're looking for that, if you're like wanting the next level in your body and also in your life, truly, that's what we're doing. So. Uh, seeking bad A's <laughs> to join higher. I do have some spots open. Um, it is limited. I can only handle so many clients at a time, but if you would like to find out if it's a good fit for you, you can go to my website, taragarrison.com and you can request a call and we can see if, if it's a great fit for you. Um, and yeah, I, I just wanted to tell you guys about higher so you could get a little glimpse into what I'm doing on the daily. And if you're looking for something a little more self-guided, I do have my keto in and out program, um, on my website. Site. So you can either do a small taste and try it for eight weeks, or you can go a full year. That baby is comprehensive. There is a video of every recipe, video of every exercise. There's a 60 day course teaching you how to do keto or 30 days of keto. And then 30 days of bringing back the carbs, FAQ video library, Facebook group, like all of that. So if you're more of like the self guided person and you just want stuff planned for you, um, that is also an option on my website. It's taragarrison.com. I'll link it all in the show notes and all right, we'll go ahead and get into our episode. All right. So Dr. Rogers, I'm so excited to, I'm like, I want to skip ahead to the spiritual chapter, but <laughs> I also love science. And I know I obviously from your life trajectory, you also love the blending of the science and spiritual together because that's really, to me, it's like two witnesses, right? Like if it makes sense in spirituality and if it makes sense in science, like now we're onto something, you know? And so, um, let's start though. Let's, let's start with your, your medical training. Now I know that you got your bachelor's in psychology, which is super cool, um, which really prepared you for the work that you're doing now. And then went on to public health, but then you became medically trained as an epidemiologist. And I was wondering if you could just explain what that is for people who might not know. Absolutely, Tara. And you know what, it's such a good question. I think because don't you think too now, even in the midst of a global pandemic, and now we hear the word epidemiologist more, but I don't think anyone in the public front is actually explaining like what that means. What yeah. We We're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah. And um, this will make you and everybody laugh that's listening. Usually, at least up until this point, well, before the pandemic started, my dad actually got me a sweatshirt one year for Christmas that said, I solve, I'm an epidemiologist. I solve problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand because <laughs> people would always say, oh, what do you, what kind of doctor are you? And I'd say, oh, I'm an epidemiologist. And I'd feel so bad because they'd either go one of two ways. They'd say, they think for a second, and they'd say, oh, you're a skin doctor. And I oh, wow. get that because they're thinking, you know, epidermis. And I think right. that's where the connections coming or they'd look at me and I could tell they're thinking like, I, I don't even know where to go with that. <laughs> Okay. So now we can educate the audience. That's so that doesn't happen to you. <laughs> so, you know, it's interesting what, if you actually, and I used to teach this co-teach this class in graduate school, but if you looked up in a, in a, you know, any type of textbook or dictionary, what the definition of epidemiology is. So depending on the reference, you know, that you are looking at, it would say something like epidemiology is the study of the frequency distribution and determinants or causes of any health issue or outcome and the application of that study to the control of those health outcomes, issues, or diseases with mm. the ultimate goal 
being the improvement of the health of popu- of the entire population or mm-hmm. groups of people. Very so, cool. Yeah. So the way I always explain it in simple terms is what I do as an epidemiologist is I study and determine the patterns and causes of health issues. So, you know, mm. just like any other doctor or field, we all have specialties. Some epidemiologists specialize in the environment. So they would study things mm. like air pollution, air quality, safety, lots of other topics like that. Mm-hmm. Some, um, some of us are infectious disease specialists. So these are going to be my colleagues really on the forefront of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. People um, in my profession specialize in injury prevention and control, cancer, chronic diseases, and really anything across the board. Veterinary, there are veterinary epidemiologists. So we specialize in pretty much anything out there that a medical doctor would also specialize in. And my specific areas of expertise are chronic diseases, disability, and aging, and in particular, healthy aging. So I was very much an expert at longevity, right? What are the factors that allow us to live long and healthy and high quality of life? Um, You know, so I'm really literally clinically trained to identify, understand, and analyze the root causes of symptoms and health issues. And while I know and believe that that is extremely important from a global perspective, and that is traditionally where epidemiology lives, What I am doing now is merging it down to the individual level in my current practice. And at this point in time, I'm not aware of any other holistic health coach and experts who apply epidemiology um, and this background to the individual singular level to Mm -hmm. allow us to really get down to the root causes of why we feel the way we feel. So I'm passionate about it. I know. I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, do you want to be best friends? I want to talk to you for like (laughs) days, weeks, months. I have so many questions. That's awesome. That's so exciting. I'm like, I, I, you know, it's funny. Um, I just, I almost went on a little social media rampage rant. And I was like, no control yourself. But I like, I just recently in two days in a row had some two different people tell me that their doctors put them on basically amphetamines to help them lose weight. And I was like, livid, honestly, like livid. And I was like, okay, this is not okay. I'm not over here being like, Hey, you know what? I kind of know how the knee joint, uh, com- <laughs> connects. Let me, let me, let me get in there. Let me cut you open and just start messing around. Cause I, I feel like I could help with that. And I'm like, man, like, uh, I, I'm like, how about we ask why? you're having a hard time losing weight instead of here's a pill for that. Like they're not even asking why. And, 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 you know, these people have so much emotional trauma and, and like low neurotransmitters and all like horrible gut health and all these things that are making it extremely difficult mm-hmm. for them to lose weight. But I'm like, what medical field, medical field is a lot of it is not asking why, like, I'm like, how can you, how can you be working with people day in and day out and see them coming into your practice and having, and not kinda at the end of the day, when you go home, be like, why is that happening? Like, and you're basically your field is why <laughs> that's what you're doing is why. And Tara, I will tell you literally, like you're getting me, you're like <laughs> in flame inside of me right now, because literally word for word, everything you just said is why I had to walk away from that field because I could not continue to stand by and keep my mouth shut while yeah. I watched us continue to not ask the right questions. And then I fell victim along my own healing journey to that system and lived the experience Mm. that my patients and clients now live. And Mm. that just changed everything. Wow. Do you mind sharing a little bit about that? Oh, of course not. And I know you'll love and empathize with this story. And I know so many of um, our beautiful listeners will too, because I think that as women, especially we all have lived this journey in some way, shape or form, but So I was working on my doctorate. I was, you know, very much at that point in my career, Tara. Um, I've known since I was three years old that I came into this lifetime to help others heal. So I knew my purpose, Mm -hmm. but I just thought that I was going to blindly follow that in a very traditional way. Right, right. So that was my track. At that point in time, I was not even thinking about this practice. This was not even an Mm -hmm. imagination. It wasn't even a figment of my imagination yet. So I was working on my doctorate, very traditional, very much believed in that belief system wholeheartedly with all my heart and soul and preached it, you know? Um, And then I was getting ready for class one morning and I collapsed on my bathroom floor and I went into convulsions and I had never experienced that kind of pain in my life. Mm. It's a long story, but I'll keep that, give you the notes version for us. 
my brother had to literally pick me up off the floor and run with me in his arms to the car to take me to the emergency room. Eventually I was admitted because I had massive kidney stones at the age of 23. So super rare wow. for a girl like me, like me. But do you know, Tara, that from that, from the very beginning, no one was, they felt the need to constantly point out to me that, boy, this is rare. Boy, girls, like, it's not, not only are you a woman, but you're a young woman. And we don't see this happen in girls like you, but nobody was asking why. Right. So I ended up having surgery that week with a surgeon who said to me, his very last words were, you should know how lucky you are because you are going to make me late for my tea time today. And I literally remember thinking to myself, I'm going to die in here. And then I woke up and oh he gosh. had said to my parents, you, I blasted your kidney stones. You're going to pass them within 72 hours and you're going to go home feeling like a million bucks. Well, 72 hours later, and then 10 days later, I was still in the hospital getting worse, not better. And he was refusing to come and see me. I ended up coming within hours of my own death because my parents had to file a grievance with the hospital, get a new physician and surgeon on my case who discovered that I'd actually been bleeding internally since my surgery. Oh. I was going into septic shock and by the time he found me, he said I was within hours of death. He wow. actually had me say goodbye to everybody. He told my parents, there's probably nothing we're going to be able to do, but I'm going to give it a shot. So, but you need to be prepared. So I said goodbye to everybody. Oh my and gosh. Literally Tara, I will tell you this part of the story because it's spiritual. And I know this will mean something to you. And I don't actually, I've never said, told this story in a public way. Mm. But on the way to that emergency surgery, I was outside the elevators and, you know, and I was in, I, when you're dying, I mean, I know any, I know you and anyone listening knows what chronic pain feels like. So imagine, I mean, when you're dying, if anyone out there is, is listening, has experienced something like that, I mean, you don't want anyone looking at you. You don't want mm. to be seen. You just want to be alone. I just remember laying there and just mm. ripping my bed sheets with all my might, with all my might. And there was a woman probably about 20 feet away from me, staring at me. And to this day, I'll never forget because I was mad at her because I didn't want her looking at me. And I remember thinking, why is this lady staring at me? Please mm. don't look at me. I don't want people looking at me like this. Well, no sooner am I thinking that she's literally by my side. And she says to the team, my, she says to the transport team, can I give her something? Now keep in mind, I'm gripping the bed sheets. I never opened my hands. All she did was put her hands on mine and lay and come down toward my face. And she said, and just rock, I felt this calming presence go over me. And she just said, I just need you to know that everything's going to be okay. And wow. she, and I, I opened up my hands and there was an angel pin inside of my hand. Ooh. And I looked up to say, thank you. And she was literally gone. Now I had been on drugs, so many drugs. So I honestly thought I hallucinated this whole thing. So I look up at the transport team and said, did you see that? And they nodded their heads and kind of like this weird, like I knew they'd seen something like I'd seen that it was hard to believe. And I knew that this was something divine. Wow. So I asked, can they please bring the angel pin into surgery with me? And here I am talking to you. So I think we all know what happened, but literally against the odds, I'm a mil one in a million shot. I am here to tell my story. And the reason I am Tara is because I came here to do something different. Oh yeah. I was put here and I got to come out of that situation because I have a purpose to fulfill. And now I know with every moment of my life that I put one foot in front of the other toward that purpose. But that was actually the beginning of my journey, Tara. After that, I had over half a dozen surgeries. Then I had started accumulating every chronic issue and illness you could possibly imagine, right? So I started getting things. I was dealing with anxiety, PTSD, depression, hormonal imbalances, IBS, all kinds of gut issues, chronic constipation, bloating, um, chronic migraines, horrible acne everywhere all over my body. I mean, you name it. I was like a walking, talking hot mess. And of course I started going around the traditional field once it's from specialist to specialist and every single one of them, all they wanted to do was give me another prescription and another yeah. prescription and another prescription. Yeah. And so when I started asking my traditional doctors questions, why are my hormones out of balance? You're telling me I have inflammatory bowel disease. Why do I have inflammation in my gut? Do you know what they would say to me? First of all, they didn't like me asking questions. So the person that didn't like it the most said to me, she said, 
can we cure IBD? And now at this point, she'd given me a prescription med. And she said, can we cure IBD? No, we can't, Elizabeth. But you know what? Can we, can we manage it? Yes. So are you always going to feel good? No. But you know what? You're just going to have to manage it. And I remember walking out thinking in my head, you know, I want to say curse words even just- Me thinking, too. I can like, I feel like venom I coming in my mouth. Yes. Like I was like salivating <laughs> with like, I wanted flame like to like bust out of my ears and my nose, my nostrils and my mouth. I felt like I was seeing red. Seriously. I, re I remember going out to my car and thinking, nobody gets to tell me or any patient that we just have to manage it, that that's as good, that this is as good yeah. as it's ever going to get. Are you kidding me? So at that point, I felt that traditional medicine was completely refusing to, uh, to dig any deeper with me. So I walked away and went into the alternative health realm and I started seeing naturopaths, functional med docs, acupuncturists, chiropractors, Ayurvedic docs, you name it, I've been there and done it. And mm -hmm. while I got more pieces of the puzzle, Tara, which was really important, mm -hmm. every time I worked with someone new, every time I did another program, every time I did another thing, I felt like something was still missing. And I felt like we still weren't digging deep enough. So I kept going to all these practitioners, right? Cause I'm thinking the one, the one I'm looking for, she's out there or he's out there. And I right. am going to not give up till I find her because I know she's out there. Someone, I just wanted, you know what I wanted? I wanted somebody to listen. I wanted somebody to give me time time where I felt like they actually wanted to be there with me and give me that time. Not like I felt like the other half of them was not present and paying attention to how much, how much time they could give me so they could get out the door to the next patient. Right. I wanted someone to put the pieces of my puzzle together with me to connect yeah. the dots and help me understand underneath all this stuff I'm dealing with what's underneath all of this mm -hmm. junk, because I know there is something there. And you know what? I never found her because one day I woke up in my bathtub. I was like on meds, you know, trying to manage my gut issues. I felt like the worst I'd ever felt in years, even though I was quote unquote, successfully managing my issues. <laughs> and I looked in the mirror and I kind of had one of those like moments out of body moments. And I just heard this voice and it was like, if not you, then who like, don't you see that you're who you're looking for? Yeah. And I realized that honestly, at that point, Tara, I realized that I was my only hope. And I thought, either this is going to be my life or I'm going to save my own life because I'm pretty sure that now I think that this is what I'm meant to do. Mm -hmm. I'm meant to help people. I'm meant to rescue people from this system. I'm tired of watching them take our power away from all of us. So mm -hmm. I, so that's what I did. I started at that point, putting the pieces of my own puzzle together, creating what it ultimately became now the backbone of my practice, my holistic approach. But I just thought, you know, we don't dig deep, deep enough, Tara. While naturopaths and some of those docs get us closer and we start to talk about maybe some of the underlying toxins and pathogens that might be driving our conditions on the surface, there was still this other missing right. piece, right? I think you and I and our listeners know that there's a spiritual energetic component. I mean, think about that equation E equals MC squared, right? What does M stand for? The material, the physical, right? But what is the other side of that equation? It's E. What is E? It's energy. So it's funny how in traditional medicine, we literally only focus on that one side of the equation when there's this whole other wow. half that we seriously turn a blind eye to. Wow. And I just started thinking, mm -hmm. I think that true deep holistic healing, I don't think it's a one and done anything. I don't think it's a program right. of any type, whether it's natural or pharmaceutical. I think that it's a journey and I think that it's a lifestyle and I think it's a way of living. And so that's what I did. I just walked away and I started building this all and, and here I am. So how, where did your energy healing journey take you? Where did, you know, you, oh my gosh. I, where, oh. how, tell, don't leave us hanging. Oh, what yeah. happened? <laughs> you want to nerd out with me about this? I love <laughs> Yo, so definitely. Well, okay. So this is so awesome. Well, I always, I honestly, even in my very traditional phase of my journey, when I was in, you know, getting my psychology degree at that point, I was thinking about, do I go the public health street where I was actually being recruited into clinical psychology grad school. So I was so super traditional, but even along that way, ever since I was little, I've always really been into spiritual stuff. Like I've always loved when I was little, my best friend and I used to play at the Ouija board, yeah. tarot cards, like I'd play with runes. You know, I was always definitely open to and fascinated by that realm. And you know, what's funny, Tara, is I can actually remember when I was not joking, you're probably about 12 years old. 
I knew I wanted to be a doctor and I was so serious about it, you know? And I can remember even then saying to myself and telling my mom this and saying that I know that if I'm going to be a great doctor and really help people that you have, I really believed that to be a good doctor, you have to know, believe, and be willing to acknowledge and accept that there are always going to be things that seem beyond human explanation that also have everything to do with this. And that's just what I believe. I believe there are always things that seem immeasurable to hard science, right? That seem beyond human explanation. Because if we can't see it, hear it, feel it, touch it, smell it, taste it with our human eyes, especially people who are very much born and raised by traditional philosophies, don't want to believe that that could possibly be real. But I have lived it. The reason I'm here right now has nothing to do with traditional medicine and science. The reason I'm here and not on any medications and talking to you with skin totally clear, no digestive issues, don't have any mental or emotional health problems. It's not because prescriptions got me there. It's not because any program got me there. It's because I learned to address all of the factors that impact our health and ability to heal every day. And you and I both know that that's not just from what's going on in our external environment. Nope. Yeah. I, I love this so much because like, you know, I noticed you know, we're on Instagram right before we got on, you had yeah. tagged me that you were, you know, doing your, yeah. your meditation, your morning, you know, yeah. routine. Yeah. And, like, and actually right before we met, I like did some Palo Santo and just you know, got some good vibes going in here for us. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, it's funny you, you explain that so well is so often people want to reject this and they only, yeah. only want to trust like Western medicine. And I'm like, okay, do just do some simple Google researching then on like any, almost any health issue. I guess guarantee you will find at some point, we don't really understand. We don't really know why I'm like, we don't even know what makes our heart beat for our whole lives. We don't even know what makes women go into labor. Really? Like we don't need all of these, you know, these, these amphetamines that I told you that these doctors are putting these yeah. people on. I'm looking at it. And they're like, we don't really know how it works. Like, no. so if you want to just completely rely on Western medicine, just know that you're relying also kind of on something that ha- it actually doesn't have basis all over no, the place. So it's like, you have to, at some point, accept that this is how, so mother nature, you know, you can see a lot, if anybody's watching on YouTube, a lot of my, like in my house, a lot of things have to do with nature. And I love nature because nature is the master teacher. And there's so much we don't know about it, but we can try to follow some of those patterns and we, you know what I mean? And so what would happen in nature? If we were out in nature, we would be in meditation all the time. We wouldn't have TV and phones and all these things to distract us. We would just be sitting there looking at a freaking plant. We would be sitting there just walking and breathing, you know? And so anyway, I just, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm so with you on the, on the energetic realm. I believe that's why also why I live a life of like true happiness is the way I would describe it because that is my anchor for it. That is where it all comes from. That's the connection, the soul, you know? So, yeah. I have to tell you and our listeners about a place that I have a feeling you're all going to love. And this is actually where I ended up going and really discovering myself and a lot of the things that became my spiritual gifts. Because now I'm I'm a master. I'm trained um, at the master's level for medical intuition. I'm a Reiki Mm. practitioner. I do hands-on and remote spiritual healing. And I always wondered, like, where do you go, right, to learn that kind of stuff? Right. About eight years ago, now this is, there's a place in the United States called Lilydale and it's in New York, upstate New York in a little huh. um, county called Chautauqua. Very beautiful. Now mm-hmm. I'd always known about Lilydale. It's a little tiny spiritualist community, but they, it's lots of mediums live there. Very like mm-hmm. this. It's an enter. It's sort of like, um, this would, I would parallel it to a lot of people know that Sedona, Arizona is like yeah. a nat- known to very well known to be a natural energy vortex. Yeah. Well, so is Lilydale, New York. Mm-hmm. I'm and going. <laughs> I <literally laughs> Done. <laughs> there, you'll freak out. Like I literally woke up one day, seven years ago, about a week before the 4th of July and had this, like, I've never had this happen to me before in my life, but I woke up and I felt like I have to get in the car and go to Lilydale right now. I, I don't even know. It was like this overwhelming yep. thing. I couldn't yep. ignore it. So I seriously <laughs> practiced the case, got in the car and went. And mm. that really began my spiritual journey. And mm. I discovered you can take classes there. So if anybody, for you or anyone listening, go check out their website because, um, you know, one kind of 
upside to the pandemic is that they used to be very old school and you could not take, you had to physically go there if you wanted to train or do classes, but now you can do all their stuff online and remotely. So um, oh, wow. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah you, I, you're going to love it. I just feel called <laughs> to tell you. Yeah. I, I'll just it. have to like wrap uh, like, uh, I don't know, back that up, I guess with, I recently, like I had this big, like download. It was like, you are going to Sedona, <laughs> Arizona, and you're going by yourself. Like you're going down there and you're going to do some, some energy healing there. And I, and I was like, wait, but this doesn't even make any sense. Like, I don't even like why I'm just going to like freaking just go like, just like That's walk around. I, like, I was kind of even driving there. Like where, what am I doing? I'm not sure, but I'm going to just follow my intuition. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's like, I, I, I don't, I, well, I guess I do. I would say, I was going to say, I don't really get caught up on the numbers thing, but I guess I do because the one, zeros, ones, and twos are just like insane for me. And I went to book the flight for Sedona and it was all $222. I'm like, you gotta be freaking kidding me. I was like, okay, fine. I'm going. And I ended up going on like 10, 20, 20, 20, and then like having my big experience there on 10, 22, 20, 20. So anyway, um, and then I went to Tulum recently. So just real quick, the energy vortex thing. I didn't I even Tulum. know. I, I went to Tulum cause it was my friend's birthday and she wanted to go really? to Tulum. I did all my yoga teacher training there. Isn't it? Oh, magical? it's so powerful. I get, I had this spiritual feeling come in and it was like, Tara, you are not going to be able to understand in your conscious mind why you need to go to Tulum, but you need to go. And like, it's important for you to be in that energy. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I still don't know for sure, but I do know I made some major life transformation choices right after I came back. And so did both of my friends. So I'm such a believer. I just had to say that real quick to back up what you're saying. Cause I have had some massive, massive changes happen to me from being in certain areas. I completely 100% believe in it. And it's awesome that they also have like resources to teach you. you yes. Isn't it awesome? So you've lived that experience. Like, so, yeah. you know, like there are just, we can, you know, receive benefits even for healing from places and spaces, you know? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, so people listening, like, I know they're going to want to hear like, Oh my gosh, like, where do I start? So I'm just curious, like in your practice now, where you're doing the holistic healing approach, what's your practice? Sorry. It is called healthy transformations with heart. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. And real quick, just so I, I'm just curious, like, do you do remote consults with like anybody can work yes. with you? Yes. Mm, so I, right. and that, that's a great question because I actually, did not, my practice was not online until last year during the pandemic. And I really pivoted it because cool. like, you know, now about me, um, especially seeing the stuff I've done in my career, you know, that my biggest thing is that I just want to be able to help as many people as possible in the most genuine way possible. So I just realized, I thought, you know what, it's time. I, I have to help, you know, I have to pivot to go online. So I work with, I have clients now in the UK. I have a client in Denmark. So I've got clients cool. all over the world, literally. Well, I'm glad that the pandemic brought that. So now more people can work with you. Cause I, I a hundred percent, like, I see you, I I'm like, I feel you. I know you're like, you. I'm going to freaking help people, <laughs> you know, by the way, you need to know Dr. Gary Forsman. Um, he was also on my podcast. You guys are like the same. He's like a shaman Reiki healer. I um, after I, listen, I, I have to connect with him, yeah. <laughs> but I he's have. like also a double board certified internal medicine doctor. And he's just like wonderful. Yeah. Anyway, I got to get you on primal. I, I'm going to connect you with El Russ. You got to get Thank on primal. You. Primal Isn't primal it nice to she know will love you. that there are like-minded, you know, there are, there's a uh -huh. huge growing number of practitioners yeah. that come, especially from the traditional realm, like us that are really hoping to help people get to experience the embodiment of really, I think what we should be offering people is a true union of, you know, the merging of the very best of Western medicine and science with the true, you yeah. know, energetic, spiritual, natural, and holistic components that really cultivate true healing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and bring happiness yes. and peace instead of I'm on 20 pharmaceuticals <laughs> that bring all these other health problems. It's like, it's, it's, I think I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm stepping out of my lane, but I'm like, I think if you really, truly want to help people from the bottom of your freaking heart, you can't help, but go into the blending of the science and no, the spiritual, you because you see, there's so much value in both of them and somewhat you can't, you can't have it all unless you have that heart connection. I love that you put with heart. <laughs> you know, it was so thing. funny when I actually first started my practice, I wanted to call it just heart because that's wow. all that I am. And it's <laughs> my, my full name's Elizabeth Ann Rogers. And so 
it was actually my youngest brother that pointed this out to me. He was like, you know, because he knows I don't believe in coincidence. Oh, wow. Said, you know, it's not a coincidence that your initials literally are this middle of the word hard. <laughs> and I thought, oh my goodness. But honestly, Tara, the reason I name my practice that is because I, what I do really is help people make a transformation. It's not, you know, this is not, if you want to work with me, you're not coming to, we're not doing a one and done approach. This is not a, we're doing this so that you can go back to X, Y, and Z. This is a, it's time for you to transform so that you can have lasting, like you said, lasting yeah. health and wellness, you know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have to ask you this one question. It's maybe a little bit random, but I just, it keeps coming at me and it's like, so I work with a lot of people who have hypothyroidism or autoimmune issues, Hashimoto's, bring them out. Um, uh, man, and I, and hormone issues and, you know, histamine reactions and like all of this. Right. And I, I'm like, often find myself in meditation, like what, like, why, what, what, what is, what is going on? Like what is causing this to start? And, and I know they're all inflamed. That's one thing I get, you know, and I'm, I'm curious because, oh, especially also with like endometriosis and a lot of these like reproductive issues, I've, I've just personally noticed that those, a lot of those conditions are also usually matched with a lot of emotional trauma and stress. And I was curious your thoughts on like trauma and chronic emotional stress in regards to inflammation in the body. Oh my gosh. I love this question. And I'm so glad you asked it because you're right. And I, Tara, I too make this observation all the time. I can't tell you, I, I would say a majority of women in my practice are dealing with one or off most often more of the issues that you literally just went through and yeah. And right in traditional medicine, hormones and inflammation are two of the most common culprits that we're told, oh, it's hormones up, it's inflammation, but, mm -hmm. but it's not just that. And I will tell you what is really going on underneath the surface of a lot of these issues mm -hmm. is adrenal fatigue. And that is at the hands of chronic stress. So I can even explain how yeah. that stuff all happens. So, and I think this is so helpful too, for women, our women listeners, Tara, because I will tell you ladies, we, um, so a former part of my career, I am an expert in, um, what's called subclinical cardiovascular diseases. So, the, the, so our ability to start to actually detect them before they're manifesting clinically, and you're mm. actually feeling, you know, symptoms of a heart attack or heart pains or whatever. Okay. So, you know, it's always for me about what's sub what's as far deep as I can get now, what I've really discovered in my practice is at the root of all of this is adrenal fatigue. And that is due to chronic stress. And like I was saying, back to women in particular, women in particular have a tendency to take on stress in a much different way than compared with men. We tend to really embody it. We tend to bring it in emotionally and where women in particular, believe it or not, actually take on a lot of the burden of our stress is on our left adrenal gland, which sits right on top of our left kidney. So when I do medical intuitive sessions with my clients, I often see women with literally Tara, I'm not kidding you, radiating left adrenal glands because they are so overburdened that they just can't take a break. So this is kind of, I'll walk you through, you and our listeners through the cycle of what's kind of the pathway of what's going on. So ladies, imagine, you know, we all deal with chronic stress and I think this is one of the biggest players in our lack of ability to manage chronic illness appropriately in traditional medicine, because we do not address this because, right, we shove people out the door. If a woman comes to us in a clinical practice setting and she's telling me about her physical issues, but then she also starts to say, well, you know, I've also been depressed. I've also been feeling anxious. Here's what we're trained to do. We're trained to say, well, that's really good to know, but you know what? I got to go on to the next patient. Here's a script for you to go talk to a counselor or a psychologist. Why don't you go consult with them? Well, I don't want to put your pieces of your puzzle together. Please don't ask me to put your, attach your mental and your, and your physical health, because God forbid we do that. I I would prefer to completely dismantle the human body, Ooh. but you know, I feel like that's what we do, so True, but honestly, you know, and it's no offense to traditional providers, but this really is just honestly the approach. And when I worked in the clinical traditional practice, do you know, I got in trouble almost on a daily basis because, um, my boss told me I was spending too much time with my patients. I can only imagine. <laughs> Good for you. What I did every single day can 
continue to do exactly the way, do it my way, because I knew that if I, if, 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 if there was a patient crying in my office and she just lost her pet, her cat today, and she needed some support, then I was going to give her that for as long as she needed it. And I didn't care what they said, but back to chronic stress. So right, we're all stressed out. And what happens, Tara, is as you know, we have right two branches of our autonomic nervous system, our sympathetic, which is that fight or flight. And that's what gets activated when our adrenals are worked and we're stressed out. Then we have that parasympathetic nervous system. That's the other branch that's calming and helps bring us back down again. Well, what I see happening in people with chronic stress is that they're literally stuck in fight or flight mode. And it's like, I feel like we have raised a society of women who we have literally allowed our parasympathetic nervous system to become completely atrophied. Like we, like a muscle atrophy, like it's just like a limb, limb, like it doesn't even know what to do. It doesn't know how to work anymore because we don't know, we're not taught how to nurture it. Yeah. It's looked ourselves. down upon. It's look, it is. It's, it's being go, lazy. Go, go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even think about, I, I even think when I brought my business online and I, it actually bothered me because I'd see, and I still see, you know, so many coaches, coaches, like, and think people posting, like you got, it's all about the grind. It's all about the yeah. grind, the grind, grind, grind. If you're not working, if you're not sleeping three hours and working all night, then you're not going to be successful. Right. And you know what? I call bullshit on all of that because that is just not true. It is absolutely not true. And I think it's sad that we are, that's so ingrained in us. Now, I think mm-hmm. especially women, we feel called to just over give ourselves. You know, we're moms, we're partners, we're business owners, we're coaches. We do so many things that it just feels like selfish, right? To mm-hmm. take care of ourselves. But mm-hmm. in this, what's going on when people are chronically stressed, Tara, is that adrenal gland, right? It's producing chemicals like adrenaline. And while adrenaline is actually really helpful, right? Because every time we get stressed out, believe it or not, it's thanks to the production of those chemicals that literally every time we get stressed, we don't have a mini stroke or some sort of cardiac event. So, so they're, they're life-saving chemicals, but when they're overproduced, that, 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 um, adrenaline actually becomes toxic and corrosive to our system. And so I see that then starting to be what wears on hormone issues. I see this, what starts to lead to chronic inflammation because that pattern really weakens and impairs your immune system. And now with a woman's immune system down and our immune systems already go out of whack because we're women who go through cycles and go through phases of life like that, that are very different compared with men. Mm -hmm. Now you allow things to happen like, here's an example. Let's say you had some thyroid issues. Okay. I have a client with thyroid issues right now. So I'm going to kind of use that. I'm going to use a similar story as an example. So let's say she's got thyroid issues. Now she's got fatigue on top of that. And her doctor's telling her she's just mom tired. Now they slapped on some medications and now she's sleeping too much. So now they've given her more medication so that she could try to stay awake during the day. So now she's got this whole host of issues and she believes she needs to be on these medications to manage the stress and these issues when really what's going on is that because her immune system's weakened and that adrenaline and that par- that sympathetic nervous system are so active, then what happens is it allows our immune system to, it's like a moment of vulnerability for toxins and pathogens that live in our body, right? And then all of a sudden they can start to do things for like attack our vagus nerve and inflame it right? Mm -hmm. So some of those things that just live in our bodies all the time and otherwise are dormant and don't really bother us. When we put our bodies in a system of being chronically and heightened at stress, at a stress level all the time, our immune systems start to react. And that's why, you know, we have all these women dealing with issues that they can't seem to like come back down from, you know, Mm -hmm. we have these heightened emotions and we're all up here and we just keep slapping medications on it rather than teaching women like, you know, do you ever try some just breathing techniques or, you know, some of these other more holistic modalities? Maybe you just kind of need to get grounded. Maybe it's actually that you're deficient in B12 and we just need to supplement your body with some of the things it's lacking to help yeah. you all balance back out again. Maybe it is just as simple, Tara, as giving our body the right nutri- nutrients in the form of healthy snacks to feed our adrenal glands because it is and can be that simple. 
we don't teach people those, know. you know, really simple things. Oh man. Thank you so much for describing that. I lived that for a minute. I was going through like major life trauma and I was in, I was grinding, baby. I was grinding. I was in freaking survival mode, honestly. And yeah. I was getting sick all the time. And then I got my minerals checked and my magnesium was in the shitter. Like it was so low. And I was like, I, I, it was a gift to me because I actually went and did ayahuasca in Costa Rica, like right, oh. right after that. And it was like this, like freaking nervous system reset for me. Like it all, it helped me see everything that I needed to see. I literally for three of the four ceremonies, I slept. That's what mother ayahuasca did for me. She like, was like, you need sleep girlfriend. So if people next to me getting their ass kicked, they're like freaking crying and puking. And I'm like waking up like, Oh shoot. I missed it. You know? And I really just think that's what the medicine knew I needed. It was like, you need sleep. You need repair, you know? Um, yeah. I, I, I'm very open about my love for plant medicines. I'm such a, I love plant medicines too. Believer. You would, sometime I have to connect you with my wonderful friends and colleagues, Gina and Elizabeth, who have a podcast called the vine, but they're all oh. about plant medicine. And like, they started this thing called the plant media project. And Oh, very cool. Anyway, yeah. we, all of us have to connect sometime. And, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would love that. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, um, it's now, you know, I, I, de I definitely am tend to be more of the grind mode, right? Definitely. I get in those modes easily. I love that mode. It's very addicting. It feels good. Right. It's that adrenaline rush is very addicting, but I intentionally offset it. Luckily I have a lake right by my house. So I intentionally offset it as much as possible. Walk around that lake with no incoming, like maybe music. If I intuitively feel like, like, like meditation music, you know, but most of the time just freaking silence with no intention. I'm not trying to solve any problems. I'm not trying to get any downloads. I just want just silence, you know? And that, I think for me, like that's been key for maintaining, being able to keep that balance. And I'll just add real quick to back up what you were saying in training, I see this happen a lot with women. They get, um, especially the ones who are adrenaline prone, they tend to be the over exercisers. And so they just want to, they want to lift and they want to go to the orange theory and then they want to run yeah. afterwards. And then they're going to go for a hike and they're going to have three coffees. So they don't eat food and they just keep doing that until they freaking crash and burn. Yeah. And guess what? You can't even build any muscle when you're in that adrenaline cortisol state anyway. So yeah. you're not getting any results. You're literally spinning your wheels. You're probably going to end up getting hormone balance. It's going to make you gain more weight. And it's like, man, you know what? You can go in there and get a small, uh, go, go hard, like go intense. It, well, maybe not. If you have a hypothyroidism, you need to stop. <laughs> but if you're in a okay state right now, um, you know, it, but like 20, 30 minutes go intense and then done. And what I do is I start breathing. I lay my butt down in the middle of the gym where everybody can see me and I don't care. And I lay there with my palms towards the sky and put my beautiful, you know, ayahuasca type meditation music on. And I breathe as big as I can into my diaphragm to activate that parasympathetic. And I try to stay there as much as I can. Cause my tendency, my want is to be in the sympathetic all the freaking time, you know? So just sharing that, like, if you are like that, which you probably are, cause a lot of us are like okay. actively seek out the parasympathetic states, you know, like go for a walk, like give yourself that breathe, check your breathing. Are you breathing big? You know? So anyway, just wanted to like, are you breathing big? Are you, are you even present? You know, I think when we yeah. get, mode, we can have a tendency to just go in autopilot. And even if yeah. we were like, you know, in the grind and more super focused, right. You know, it really can throw us out of whack. Totally. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, um, the last question that I had for you was, I'm just curious, like, I, I'm just curious where you start, you know, like, do you just listen to somebody and then you have this huge tool belt? So you just kind of know where to go from there. You just talk to them. Like, where do you start with somebody? I love, love, love that question. <laughs> Well, I always start by, you know, what I always tell people is that the first thing we're going to do is put the pieces of your puzzle together. Mm. So honestly, where I start Tara is just by really deeply connecting with somebody, you know, it's my goal to just really give somebody this safe, sacred space and healing space that I think is very lacking across the board in yeah. our traditional healing modalities. Cause I want them to know right off the bat that I'm different. And this is going to be different. You know, even one of my new clients yesterday, when we were in her session, she said to me, she's like, Dr. Rogers, can I just say to you, she's like, thank you for taking the time to care enough to figure this out for me. She said, but I have to tell you, and this is something I get a lot. She said, I was so hesitant. She said, now I feel bad for being hesitant to come work with you. She said, it's just that I've been to a functional med doc and I've tried this other program. She said, and I just 
She said, and even that just didn't get me. I just felt like there was still something missing. She said, and so I just thought like, you know, gosh, should I, should I really invest in another program? And I just said to her, I said, don't you dare be sorry. I have all the love and the patience in the world for anyone that comes and works with me, Tara, because what I know for sure is that 90% of the time they're coming to me after they've been burned a whole lot of times. So what I really do is just start by taking time to really connect with people. I want them to be able to tell their story. I want to hear the whole story too. I don't just tell, I don't want to just hear like little bits of it. I want to hear right. everything. I want to hear the good, the bad, and everywhere in between. I want to hear about your struggles. I want to hear about what yeah. you've tried and what hasn't worked. I want to hear about your frustrations with the experiences you've had and what ultimately has been disappointing about this for you, because I want to, as effectively as I can, fill right. all those gaps for you. So it's so important for me to have that level of connection and communication right from the beginning with people. Totally. I love that. Thank you. I, it makes me, that's how I am too. I'm like, it, it's truly, you know, the questions on the tests in school where it's like not enough information. Yeah. So it's like the more information I have from you, like the more likely I'm going to be able to help you. So please don't hide that part about how you drink a bottle of wine every night. And then, you know, or like, you know, or please don't hide that. For a secret night snacker, you know, like, yeah, the, the, like, I don't the, care. It's just more information to help me make more correlations. Like maybe yeah. you have blood sugar dysregulation issues, or maybe you have trauma from a kid around food, like, but like, let's get there. Cause if you can't share and that, I guess, uh, you know, that's a good message to share just in general is like the more vulnerable you are, the more you can get helped. It is true. And I bet you're like me too, Tara, where I notice the more space I can give somebody to feel comfortable sharing the more they'll start. Like yesterday, one of my clients, I was giving her doing, we were doing her, what's what I call her root cause analysis. So I was talking her through, you know, here are all the root causes of your issues. Here's exactly what your puzzle looks like. Why are these issues contributing to your fat, you know, to what you're experiencing and how are we going to resolve them? And she was just like, I just had like all these little mini epiphanies while you were telling me the story. She was like, it just hit me. She was like that. I had this. She said, when I, before I married my husband, she was like, I had this really bad breakup. She said, I was supposed to marry this other guy. She said, he left me. She was like, and that she said, and, and you, she was like, and you highlighting that there, there, there may have been some trauma that brought this on. She was like, as soon as you said that, I just knew she was like, and I had to tell you, like, that was the thing. And so see, we start to like, even yeah. in ourselves, uncover our own yeah. piece of the puzzle where we're like, oh my gosh. Yes. I think I know why I'm still having this freaking health issue. And it's because I never resolved this trauma that came up in my life 20 years ago, because I never had a chance to talk about it or deal with it. You know, Oh man, I love your, I mean, look at my logo, like the the, the name of this podcast, like the answers are inside you, the answers are inside you. And I love your moment. I thank you for sharing that beautiful visual of like, just freaking looking at yourself after your bath and being like, it's you, baby. You are your healer. You are the one. You are the one you've been looking for. Like it's this scary is it. too, isn't it? You know, yeah, and, so and much you, of how you and I help people is we try to guide our women, our people on a journey to make them realize that this is where it's all it's at. inside that. Yeah, they're the healer. I even with training, I tell people that I'm like, you're your best personal trainer. I'm not actually in your body. Yeah, I can kind of see it from out well. here, but only yeah. you know if you're really feeling your glutes engaged on that deadlift, you know. Like yeah. so yeah, yeah. don't you feel like I all I all, all I, I often think about this, Tara. And don't you feel like this? Because I'm sure everyone listening, you know, I think that's such I think a heavy burden you and I and people practitioners like us carry, right? Is that if trust me, everyone that's listening, if Tara and I could snap our fingers and make you get the results you want so bad, <laughs> do it, and we would, and we'd be making a fortune right now. <laughs> but no, yeah. like what we don't, we don't get anybody the results that they're getting. We, I feel like what we do is help people, give people the chance to just get to be like the fullest most, you know, radiant expression of themselves and get to really look in the mirror and see their own magic and their own power. And exactly those moments like you and I've had where we look in the mirror and you're like, it's me. Like I'm the badass. Like I'm going (laughs) to rock it until I freaking take my last breath. You know, 
Yeah. What was I thinking? Giving my power away. You know, I right. feel like we hope we can give that back to all of you. That's right. And I think because we've both seen the kind of the dark side, honestly, in my opinion, of, there are and people out there it. that are that like, I, um, oh my gosh, I shared this before, but this, this one woman, like her psychologist, psychiatrist or whatever, like her method wasn't working very well. The girl, she wasn't getting pro- yeah. And she said, do you see all these degrees I have behind me? No, she <laughs> she's like, do you not think I know what I'm talking about? And I was like, I wanted to be like, what, what's the address? What's the name of her practice again? I want to go pay her. <laughs> it was like the ego, you know, the ego, it just drives me crazy because like, that's how people it. with the information overload right now, that's how I'm probably the same with you. They're like, well, I read this book and I heard this doctor and I heard this podcast and I had this coach and, and people are like freaking like psychotically <laughs> overwhelmed. And I'm like, Whoa. Okay. Like I'm, so true. I'm just here to help you facilitate, ask great questions and point you in some directions. Maybe let's just check your blood sugar and make sure that's, Oh, it's not. Okay, cool. All right. Why don't you test this? This is what I, you know, and, but it's like, it's not this like Tara knows the way. And I just have to be this blind follower that does whatever Tara says, like, screw that shit because I'm so tired of it. I it's know. Like- I bet you're like me. I, I, I know that you're like me. We want you to ask us questions. We want yeah. you to I know you're like me. And if there, if someone asks me a question, and this is something I hope all of our listeners take to heart, please know if you ever go into a doctor's office, because I had a client say this to me this week. She said, well, my, well, my doctor said, I need to take this medication. I need to take it before I see her again. And I said, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to do anything except what you feel is right for your body. That's so right. don't ever, don't you dare mm. ever listen to a practitioner mm. who's starting to use language like that. Mm-hmm. What the practitioner you want to be with is the practitioner who ask a question to. And here's who I, the doctor I respect, the doctor who I ask a question to, and who can say to me, that's a great question, Elizabeth. And I can't answer that with confidence, but right. Here's what we're going to do to find the answer. Now, when my clients ask me questions I can't answer or that I know that I, I I kind of have an idea, but that it's not in my wheelhouse. That's exactly how I answer. I just say, I can't answer that for you with confidence, but here's how we're going to, here are the steps we're going to take to get you that answer. Or here's what I, who I want to talk to instead, you know, um, no one knows anything. We're not all knowing. There is none of us, none of us that are practitioners of any kind are all knowing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I just got a new client with histamine issues. And what was I doing at freaking 10 o'clock last night? I'm researching histamine. I'm texting my colleagues, like, what do you know about, you know, probiotics for histamines and all this stuff, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I can't give you, I can't give you a recommendation yet. Give me a minute. You know, I'm looking into it, but based off what I know now, like I, I I have to ask some more questions. So yeah, it's like nobody yet. This, this, we have this idea as like kids that like someone knows the answer to everything. (laughs) <laughs> and that there's that one, you know, yeah, yes. right. Oh man. You have got That's to true. meet L Russ. She hosts my other podcast with me. It's called kick ass life. She also hosts, um, the primal blueprint co- podcast, which is a really oh big podcast. Gosh, I love yeah, and she I love had the same, she had hypothyroidism, went to a million doctors. Nobody ever helped her. She got freaking pissed, found her own healing, found Dr. Gary Forsman, who I was telling you about the, yes. you know, and, and anyway, I got to enter you. She's gonna love you. There are um, so many other synchronicities too. I've literally thought of like so many people I keep thinking like, and I'll say this to you too, Tara, while we're talking, cause I mean this with all my heart and soul, you know, I think for me too, I sure, I'm sure you might, I don't tell me if you've ever felt this way, but especially when I first brought my practice online, because I was not somebody who was super active on social media in my personal life. I absolutely, there were times I'd think, is anybody out there? Like, am I the only practitioner feeling this way? So it's yeah. so important to me to, I feel like it's time for us to form our, tri- form a tribe, yeah. you yep. know? Yep. So I, I just want to say that to you. Cause I, I really mean that with all my heart and soul. And I feel very connected to you. And I think it's time for us to unite and, Oh, um, same. I'm I have Jane who has the podcast, um, Carpe Diem and she, she's a holistic health entrepreneur and just so many amazing women. We could do great things. And oh yeah. I have so many people to connect so many with. Women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is what we just honestly need more caring. You know, it's like, all right, we're like care tribe. That's what we call us. We're the care bears. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's not a coincidence you said that because can I tell you, I almost wish I could show you right now. When I was little, I was obsessed with the Care Bears. My mom said, not a I shocker. First, <laughs> when I first learned how to walk, my mom said they would literally take me to the toy store and I would like at three years old, like disappear. And I'd come like down the aisle with a Care Bear that box that was bigger than me, like <laughs> up to the, like toward the cash register. But you know why? Now I was the same girl. 
now as a grown up, and I just, I still have some Care Bears. I, I'm not going to lie. But you know, now grown up, I realized, Tara, you know why we loved Care Bears? Because that's what they were all about was caring and love yeah. and yeah. sharing. And I think yeah. even as kids, that's that we, you and I just, our beings just resonated yeah. with pure love, you know? Yeah. Yep. yep. Oh girl. I'm so glad we got to meet. Time. I'm like well, next flight to Pittsburgh. Like I think I got a new friend. <laughs> Please come see me. Where are you? I'm in Salt Lake city in Utah. So if you it's ever like want to saw your gorgeous home. pictures on your stories this morning, Oh, it's so pretty here. It, it's like 20 minutes away. You are in an Epic movie scene that you feel like you traveled for like 10 hours on a flight. Like it's unreal. It's really my fiance here. and I've been wanting to come to Utah. So we'd love to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. You I have plenty of bedrooms. You're welcome to stay with me and like hike like crazy and talk all the spiritual sciencey things, but, um, okay. Real quick before we end. Um, so is it just one-on-one clients? What, what are, what do you offer? um, That's a great question. So I do work with clients one-on-one most closely. I do also have an online holistic healing course. So that's a great option for people who aren't, who want to start to think about you know, who are anywhere in their journey, whether you're just kind of looking to cultivate a holistic lifestyle yeah. or you're really struggling with some health issues and you want a holistic approach, it's a really nice option. And actually, later what's it called? Year, it's called Survive to Thrive, The Path to Chronic Wellness. Okay, great. And it's really great. And later this year, I'm actually going to lead a group through this course for the first okay. time. I'm really excited about that. So there will be ways to work with me more collectively in a group format. Awesome. Yeah. People yeah. will love that. I, I will put links to it and all the show notes guys on YouTube and the audio options. Um, and that also courses like that can be a really great resource because then you have this permanent yes. thing. If you hear something down the road, you're like, wait, what, what did Dr. Exactly. Rogers say about that? You know, and like all my one-on-one clients, I give access to the course for, you know, for life. So that's because, that's so cool. then as curricular updates happen down the road, you Very know, cool. that's most important to me too, Tara. I, I'm sure you feel the same way. Like I don't want my clients to need me forever. So no. my goal is to build them a holistic healing toolbox that they can take for the rest of yeah. their life. Absolutely. Amazing. And then your website's URL is healthy transformations with heart.com. Okay, guys, check it out. Um, thank you so much. I'm like, I'm sitting, my mind is already like, what panels can, what events can I get her speaking on? Like, who can I connect her to? Like, you're, thank you for just showing up like who you really are and, and, and the caring and your own personal crap that you had to go through too was obviously for a reason it <laughs> so was thank you it for really en- was. enduring all of it and just bring just bringing so much caring and love and realness and intelligence and awesomeness to this space thank it was so, so awesome to meet you oh i love and adore you and i can't wait to stay connected and do more great things with you likewise